Hey, all right, good morning. Another great, great verse here. And uh, one of my subscribers actually told me to look at these verses. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 10 um, told me to look at verses 9 and 10. And uh, But as I was going through it, you know, I, I was reading, you know, before, you know, the whole chapter. And um, when I hit verse 8, I just felt this Holy Spirit. And, and this goes right along with the verse he gave me yesterday about spiritual fornication and adultery. You know, not to look for signs and miracles and all that, like like those who are lost, they want to see a sign, want to see a sign. And what did Jesus say? No sign will be given except the sign of Jonah. You know, he was in the belly of the fish for three days and, you know, and then was, came out of the fish or, you know, it's like being raised again from the dead because basically he was down in the depths and he, and then he came, rose up and was spit out on the shore of Nineveh and he got them all to repent. Thank God. Um, so anyways, First, I'll read this verse, and this is verse 8, the way we'll see it in our Bibles, and then take every word back, being led by his Holy Spirit, and you can believe that or not, that's on you. This is what his Holy Spirit's showing me, revealing to me. And um, look, we're, we're all part of the same body, but we're all given different gifts. Don't expect to have the same gift or the same knowledge as someone else. He uses all the events and things you go through in your own personal life to speak to you and draw you to himself like you're the only person in the world. It's a beautiful thing. We can all learn something from each other because we're all the body of Christ, even though we all don't see or agree on the same things we're being shown. But when you put all these little pieces of this like puzzle together, it forms a beautiful, beautiful landscape, a beautiful picture of a whole, a whole picture, right? Like we're all little pieces of a puzzle that he's teaching us all individually. So understand that, but we're to be a good Berean so when you hear something that doesn't go along with what you've been taught by men, especially in the churches, unfortunately, um, you know, be a good brand, study it, look into it, take every word back to its origin using the lexicons. I believe that's how he preserved his word through the lexicons. And I know the Strong's is like an overview of the lexicons and things, the pictographic languages. Uh, but when men translated it, what we're reading is a translation by men. Nothing in the Bible says the translators were going to do it perfectly. Now, uh, men couldn't grasp this truth until the time of the end, like it says in Daniel 12. Lock up the words of these scrolls, these books, until the time of the end when knowledge has increased and people run to and fro. So here we go. This is 1 Corinthians. I'm just going to read verse 8 right now. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 8. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day, three and twenty thousand. Okay. So now we'll take every word, word back. And, and I might need some help here towards the end because there's just something. I mean, I know what it is, but I just don't understand where we're going with it. And I'm not going to set any dates for anything. But anyways, here we go. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 8. God forbid committing fornication. And that means to be given over to idolatry and worship idols permitting oneself to be drawn away by another into idolatry, to indulge in unlawful lust, to sell yourself to defilement for the sake of gaining something to become like the most high, knowing good and evil, and dwelt, came into uh, embodiment, right? It's an idol. The word image in Genesis 1.26 means a phantom, an illusion, especially an idol. That's what our flesh is. Understand that. The churches have got it wrong. That's what it means. We've been intermingled. Now, what the Lord God did in Genesis 2 was he formed his representative here and breathed his Holy Spirit into him to correct the situation that was occurring in Genesis 1 that led all of his angels, the Elohim, astray. Because Psalms 82, 6 says, you are all, all of you, all of us are Elohim, children of the Most High God. But you will die like a man because you have fallen. You are fallen. Okay, understand that. Understand that. You understand this concept. The Bible becomes far more clear. And when you read the word God in multiple uh, books of the Bible, it does not mean the most high. It does not mean the almighty God. You need to look at it. Who does it? Who is it talking about? The God of this world? Satan was given dominion over this world for a certain time period. Understand that. 
to, to purify God's kingdom, to give all of his children free will. Because without free will, it's just a robot. Like it, There's no real true love without free will. But God came into this world to set us free and to show us what true love really is and who we are and that we belong to him. He's our creator and how to treat each other with love and kindness. Okay, so drawn away by another into idolatry to indulge in unlawful lust, to sell yourself to defilement for the sake of gaining something in the land of confusion and debauchery. And debauchery is sinking below normal standards, acting without moral restraints. So we've done this entirely under the control of the love of sinning as one that has been bribed to give himself up wholly to another's will to, to traverse. And traverse means to travel across or through, to be trafficked by traveling as a piece of merchandise into slavery in a place that is beyond on the other side as piercing through, down in place and time, pertaining to touching the natural beyond out of a measure of your own thus together in the manner of opposition as some men whosoever of themselves through the idea of the baffling wind are backwards of my own of his own unconsciously breathed to be made so we unconsciously breathed in to be made by an inanimate breeze by an inanimate breeze that's the baffling wind that's satan to wax cold and this is an inanimate vessel that we have indwelt it's an idol to wax cold and wax means to pass from one state to another waxing means passing from one state to another to become cold by waning love to be given to idolatry permitting yourself to be drawn away by another Therefore, to descend from a higher place to a lower, to fall under judgment and condemnation. We're not born into life. We're born into death. A separation from God is death. We were led away by Satan, the very first liar. We are all Elohim. We are all angels that were led astray like sheep being led to the slaughter. And we didn't gain knowledge. We lost it. And we were covered over in darkness and um, by our own conceit. Excessive pride. Same thing that was Satan's fault. He wanted to be worshipped because he was the most perfect, beautiful angel. He was God's master builder. And the Elohim are the builders, like God's the general, directing his army, telling them and giving them the... He even created them, so he created everything. He's the foundation of everything. That's why Christ is the foundation, because he is God incarnate. Okay? So, from a higher place to a lower, to fall under judgment and condemnation, under the attack of an evil spirit by falling dead, by a separation from your first love, from your first love, from Christ, right? From God. To decay, rendering homage and worshiping one. That's Satan when we're born into this flesh. And you don't even know it. That's the thing. You don't even know it. Um, uh, to fall into ruin and be lost. We're lost. The sheep that are lost and went astray. Cast down from a state of prosperity and uprightness. To lose our authority. Removed from power by death. To fail in a fixed position in place and time. Given over wholly to the outwardly. First to one in the last day. To the out so we're given over out to the outwardly first instead of God. We're given over to ourselves, our own flesh, our own desires, our own lusts, all these things of this world that keep us distracted and separated from God. So we've given ourselves over wholly to this outwardly thing first, the flesh, to one, to one in the last day um, of this present age, in the last day of this present age, the day Christ will return from heaven and raise the dead. We're all the walking dead. So what does that really mean? You know, I understand how we've been taught it in church. First, those who have died, their bodies will be raised up. Uh, I don't know. Possibly, possibly, because the spirituals played out in the physical. Okay, to rape, but we're the walking dead when we're separated from God. But we're, but we're born again of the Spirit. Now we pass from death to life. We just haven't got that immortal body yet, that glorified body, heavenly body. Okay, so the day Christ will return from heaven and raise the dead, hold final judgment, and perfect his kingdom forever at a definite time that is fixed by natural law, bound by the rising and setting of the sun in an hour that is immovable. 
And then it said three score and 1,000. That is immovable. Three score and 1,000. So there's a part I really don't understand a whole lot. It's like it's giving us a, a, a possibly a, a, a time frame or I'm not sure because at the end of that verse it said uh, fell in one day three and 20,000. Right? And 20 I know means score. Like a generation is three score and 10, which is uh, 70 years. 20, 20, 20, and 10. Or by strength, another 10, which is 80. And the generation that sees Israel become a nation again will not pass until the Lord returns. When you see the fig tree bloom again, which happened in 1948, which would bring us up to the year uh, 2018. Or if another 10 by strength, 2028. 20, so we're definitely in the time frame. We're definitely in the time frame. So anyways, there's that verse. But I want to read the rest of this verse up to 12. So now, understanding that, understanding that. Now, let's continue in this verse uh, in 9. Neither let us tempt Christ as some, of, as some of them also tempted and were tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed by the destroyer. Satan, Abaddon, the angel from the bottomless pit. Now, all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admonition to teach us upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he stand take heed lest he fall. There it is. All right. Have a good one. Bye.